Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EzraAutomation.com and welcome to another video from Ezra Automation on Specflow. And in this video, we'll be talking about setting up clean state of data with ND Framework Core for every single test run. If you are working in test automation, you will always have a challenge of working with the test data setup. And there are many ways to make this test automation data more intuitive and test more reliable. And one of the common way is to start the test with the known set of data. Well, if you're wondering how to even create the known set of data, the algorithm is going to be super simple. All we have to do is we need to start our test in such a way that we always have a known set of data filled up into our database of our application context and which we can do using the before scenario attribute which is available in specflow. And then we can start running our test and once the test execution is complete, we can then stop our test to get the complete details of how the execution has really happened. And the way to do this is very simple, right? We can do a clean data for each and every execution once it's done. And then we can insert unknown data into our database. And this can be done either using a SQL query or using an entity framework core, which is already available as a part of the darknet framework. And we are going to be seeing how we can use entity framework to perform these operations for us. Let's quickly see a quick demo on what we're talking about over here and understand how things work. But before we actually get into the actual solution of how we could be able to run the clean set of data each and every time, let's try to take a classical example of the code right now over here, as you can see, where this is going to be a simple basic API test, which is going to be performing some of the operation like getting a product detail, updating a product and its price, and then updating the product name and description. And as you can see that this is a simple scenario written using BDD specflow, where we are leveraging the power of REST Sharp to run the test against an application which is developed using .NET Core. So if I run this application using .NET Core over here, you will see that within this application, we will actually have got the following controllers like authentication controllers, component controllers, and the product controllers. And it does a lot of operations over here. We are basically testing few of these operations, and this application is running with a backend of SQL Server, which as you can see over here. So now that this data is actually intrinsic part of this application itself. And now every time if I do a get operation, the code is gonna work fine without any problem. But while we really call the update operation on the existing product, then the things are starting to change. Well, if the change is going to keep happening, then the one which is going to perform a get operation and expecting for an expected data, then that test is going to really fail. So let's see what I really mean. So now if I want to run these tests, I'm going to go to the unit tests over here, or maybe I can even click this run all operation in the writer IDE. And that's the power of the specflows IDE integration, which is out of the box available where you can run the whole test from here. So I'm gonna run all the tests from the feature level and you can see that in the unit test of the rider, it is gonna show you all the tests being running. And you could see that the first test got passed, second test got passed and third test really got failed. And the reason why it even got failed is because it is actually trying to perform an update on one of the product. But the reason why it actually got failed is it couldn't able to really find the description that what it's looking for. And now let's try to run this whole test once again. The result is going to be completely different this time. So if I run this test, you will see that even the get operation is now failing. The reason being the update operation, this guy has really modified the whole details for us. Now the updates of the database over here has changed the data from gaming keyboard with lights to the new modified keyboard. And the same is going to be true for this update as well. So let's quickly see how the database is going to look like. So if I go to the database over here and if I try running this, you will actually notice that the data has a completely modified details over here. As you can see for this particular keyboard, it actually has got something called as a new modified keyboard, something like these. And that's the problem we really have right now. Well, how to resolve this problem? Well, we are going to have like a different set of tests modifying the same data and the data which it's depending on this particular scenario should not fail at all. Well, the solution is always have a same set of known data while running the test. And the way we can do it is using the entity framework that I was talking about. So this is the same code that we saw earlier as well. But the only change that we have on this particular code is basically on the hook level, which I will quickly show you what I really mean. So if you just go to this hooks.cs file 
you will notice that this particular hook is going to be calling basically the application under test itself. If you go back to the code that we saw just now over here, which was failing, and if you go to the hook.cs file, you will actually notice that barely there is anything related to the application sitting over here. In order to run this particular code, we actually need to run our application under test as well. Basically, this particular test code relies on the application under test. It should be up and running. And if the application is not up and running, and if we try running these tests, it is going to eventually fail because it relies on the application to be up and running as well. Well, in order to avoid this problem as well, we have this particular code, which is going to basically do the bootstrapping of the application in its context. And as you can see over here in the before scenario attribute, it actually does the initialization of the application and the driver. Basically, it is initializing the rest sharp driver over here. And also it is bootstrapping the application with the database migration. And as you will see, this particular application, which is nothing but the GraphQL product app application is being bootstrapped here by calling the startup class file. And also it is creating a context to ensure the database is being deleted, migrated and created along with the C data. So everything is being done before the scenario is even being started. And while the scenario started to execute, it is going to do all this setup for us. And once the scenario has been completely executed, it is going to close or terminate the application under test, which is bootstrapped. And that's the power of us to have a test being under our control, meaning the test data is under our control. And if we go to the feature file over here, the feature file is going to look pretty much similar like how we saw earlier, but just that these tests are going to pass this time. So if I try running these tests right now, you will notice that it is going to run the get product and the update product by description and price and the name and description all together. And they are actually running one by one over here and they got passed as well. And the same thing, even if I try running it for the second time, you will notice that these tests are being executed this time as well. And if I go to the database this time, and if I try doing a query, you will notice that even though there is a modified data over here, it doesn't really matter because we always have the first set of data for the second iteration. And this is happening because of the data is being recreated each and every time while the execution really happens over here in the before scenario annotation. So that's the power of ND framework which will help us to actually seed the data and as well as perform the migration of the database each and every time while we start executing it. So that's the real power of the ND framework being used in our automation testing world so that we could ensure that our tests are always more reliable and also it runs as expected without any problem. Hope this makes more sense this time of using ND framework in the context of automation testing.